it's a business and you have to have that always in, in your mind and be disciplined in everything you do. Don't trade for trade. Have a vision, have a goal and keep to your rules. Use simulators. It costs a little bit, but it's worth it. And especially if you want to grow and get to a point where you will manage people's money, you have to do that investment. What's up, Travis? Welcome back to another trade interview here on the podcast and on the YouTube channel as well. This week, the episode is going to be a little bit different. I decided that I want to be able to bring more of my students on the podcast to kind of share what they've been up to, how they've been getting some results, and for them to share their stories of how they become good traders. So I picked some good students I had in the Digital Trade Academy and asked them to share their stories and what they've been going through to be able to go from where they were to where they are right now. And the first one in this series this week is Jiral Su. Jiral is one of my students who had a pretty amazing run these past few months by starting his own fund. And he went from a place of having little capital and trading to not growing to over $600,000 in capital, which is pretty amazing. So I brought him here on the podcast to share his story and what he went through and give you some tips, of course, on how he's been able to do that. So without further ado, let's welcome Gerald. Gerald, you're one of my students who went to the academy and got funded. You actually kind of started a pretty big fund with the academy. So I want to kind of talk with you a little bit and get some, some feedback and some thoughts on First of all, your story, but also kind of what you had to do to get there, like the tips you can give other people. Let's start from the beginning. So when did you start trading and how did that happen in the first place? Okay, I started a couple of uh, years ago and I was at the university. I got uh, interested in trading, but I didn't have time at that time to go deep into trading. But uh, still, it was in my mind that someday I will then go into trading. And uh, I think maybe five years ago, I started to go a little bit um, more deep into how to trade and, and, and what to trade. And I started uh, first with options, but um, at a certain point, I thought maybe options is not really something that I would like to do because it's very complex. We have straddles and different types of uh, strategies. So it was a little bit uh, complicated for me at that time. So I started to look at um, stocks, which is kind of a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit easier, but it required a huge sum of money to trade stocks to make it worthwhile. Then I stumbled upon Forex and based on the leverages they give you with Forex account, I thought maybe this might be an avenue I can go into. So I started uh, searching for um, information and I stumbled uh, upon baby pips and I started uh, learning about Forex. And uh, quickly after that, I stumbled upon you on uh, YouTube, um, interviewing uh, profitable traders all around the world and uh, yourself as a traveling trader. And uh, I thought, um, why not give it a try? So I, I bought the Desire to Trade course at that time. I uh, studied it from uh, start to finish. And um, after that, I uh, became uh, profitable and then consistently profitable, which is, which is what every trader, every beginner wants to reach. Because it's one thing to be profitable, but you have to be consistently profitable for, for years to attract investors. So um, at a certain time when I, when I became consistently profitable, um, I thought uh, maybe I can manage other people's money. So I started um, to look for more info on that, but um, I didn't find much info. So in uh, the different uh, mastermind calls uh, you have, um, I talked with uh, Michael Toma and uh, Alejandro too, and they gave me some pointers, what to look for, what to do. And uh, at a certain point, um, I contacted you and you told me, well, you have to begin with a one pager. So you describe me what is a one pager. Alejandro sent me a sample that he had. And based on that sample, I draw up my, my one pager. I sent it to you and Alejandro and you gave me very good feedback and I changed it a little bit. I, I designed a, a logo for the font and um, I quickly then uh, approached my friends and family because they're the most uh, logical um, investors at the beginning. 
and uh, they were interested. They were interested, and uh, they started funding me. And uh, after a couple of uh, months, they saw that uh, that uh, their capital grew, and uh, they started talking to other other family members, other friends, and and that's how the fund grew. And it's uh, now about uh, six hundred thousand dollars US. Yes, that's really awesome. I remember when we spoke last time that on Facebook, like it was only about like a year ago, and you had forty or sixty-seven thousand, which is yes. quite a big yes. move from where you are now, which is awesome. When you joined the academy, did you think, did you thought about getting to that level of trading half a million, or did this come after being no, in the academy? I- I, I didn't think that I can attract such large capital. Um, to be honest, I thought maybe I can attract maybe 50,000 or something like that. But uh, once I think um, people saw the, the returns and, and basically word of mouth and, and, and uh, how I manage the risk, which is very important to man- when you manage large sums of money, um, it grew. It grew. It grew explosively. I don't know from the disaster team told me that you at some point turned turn down capital from Access Select. They offer you money like a pro firm and then you turn it down. Yes. Why that happened? I turned them down like three times. I still get emails from <laughs> emails from them, but <laughs> but I'm not okay. interested in, in managing uh, money for prop firms. First of all, I think I, I like managing um, money for my friends and family. Um, I think the communication is very important. Um, they have to trust me with their money, but I have to trust them too in some way because um, it's very important. And, and Michael Toma taught me that that you have to have good communication with uh, with uh, with your investors because you you have various type of investors. You have investors that are they will just give you their money and maybe after a couple of months they will give you a call, but you have investors that. Every day when they receive that daily statement, they will ask questions. And uh, I don't like that type of investor. And uh, so I try to stay away of those kind of people. And um, most of my friends and family are not that way. So that's why I have close fund with them. And, uh, and I don't want to, in that way, trade for prop firms because I'm not sure how they will approach it. Will I'm not sure. And because I'm not sure, I will try, I stay away. And for me, at this moment, like I said, um, it's I'm comfortable with this amount of money. It's not large, it's not millions, but it's not uh, a small account. So I can manage it fairly well, and it, and it's okay. That's good to know. The other thing that makes a big impact is the fact that access select they give you only twenty percent of the returns, right? So that's you have to get a lot more to be able to get a proper return on that. So yeah, you know, the, even if they give you a hundred thousand, it's not really worth it for you at all because it's only like a small fraction of the profit you get. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So, how did you adapt to starting to trade for other people? Was it tough at first, or was it the same as your own trading? No, it was tough at first because um, when you trade other people's money, you have that uh, you have that feeling that you don't want to lose their money. And because you don't want to lose their money, you end up maybe losing their money. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to explain, but it's, it's very psychological, very psychological. So you have to do a couple of strategies like I did to try to think that that money is uh, your money and uh, that it's not other people's money. Because once it's other people's money, it affects your trading. But once you get over that, and uh, then it becomes easier. I try to not look at the amount of money. I, like, I only look at the amount of pips because if I, if I look at the amount of money, it's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And at some point, if you are, have a little drawdown, you will, you will quickly want to close the trades. But sometimes you have, especially with my type of trading, you have some drawdowns. You, you cannot, you cannot uh, get away uh, of that. So you have some drawdowns, but you have to just don't look at the amount of money. Look at the amount of pips and drawdown. That's it. And, uh, and, and once you get comfortable, uh, it's okay. 
And that is also one of the reasons I don't want to get bigger because the bigger it gets, the more the amount of money in, in drawdown and, and it, it messes you psychologically. So the psychological part in trading other people's money it's very, very, very important. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, and that's part of why we have plans to pull the scale up progressively, because if they just go with like bigger capital right away, then it just ends up pretty not well usually. So for sure, you have to kind of go progressively. Tell me about the strategies you use now. Are they based on the academy or are they things you found on your own after that? Yes, I have two strategies. I only trade two pairs. Um, the first strategy was based on the academy. I used the Bollinger Band. I used the stochastic as uh, indicators for confluence. So my first strategy is basically price action. I just uh, look at the market phase first. I draw my resistance and support zones. After that, I see what the candles are doing. Are they giving me an indication of where they are going? And after that, I use the indicator to give me confirmation for what I'm going to do. That's my first strategy. The other strategy is completely price action. That's candles, support, and resistance. Doesn't use any indicators. Awesome. And I think that's good. Do you feel like you want to add more strategies in the future or do you want to stick to those two? At this moment, these two work. And um, I will I will keep these two um, for the time being. I don't want to expand with other strategies because I think the simpler you leave things, the better. So I, I keep it simple. I keep it simple, two strategies, two pairs, that's it. That's good. How is your daily routine to be able to trade all strategies and manage your fund? Do you like trade all day, which we don't usually advocate, but what does that look like for you? No, no, no. I, I really don't trade um, all day and I also don't trade every day. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like this. Um, these two strategies, one works basically every day and uh, the other just works on Tuesdays and uh, Thursdays. So what I do is I wake up Monday and uh, see if the first strategy, if there's something. But I only trade if I see a setup. If, for instance, by six o'clock in the morning, because I start trading at four o'clock in the morning, by six o'clock, I don't see any setup, then my Monday is, I'm ready for Monday. I'm going to Tuesday. So if I get a setup, I trade it. But if you don't get a setup, I just leave it for that. Tuesday, I trade the other setup, which is based on the, on the desire to trade academy. And I look for, for set up again at that same time. If I, if I find one, I will enter it. But if I don't find one, I won't enter it. And then I go back to Wednesday and Wednesday I use the other strategy. And, and that normally I trade maybe three times a week, not more than three times a week. That's good. So you know which days work the best. Have you done any kind of journaling to find out which days yes. work the best? Yes, awesome. for sure. Journaling is very important. You have to have data to back up your decisions in this, in this business. So um, my data uh, said that first, uh, the first strategy I have can work every day, but the other strategy only works best on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I, I keep to that. So I'm not going to force trades or, uh, with, with, a strategy that I know will not work or the probability that it will work is low. I'm not going to do that, especially not with, with people's money. Yeah, it's, it's not the right time to experiment when you have other people's money that you trade. You still do experiment on, on your side if you want. Do you still yeah. back test some things on the side? Do you test some strategies on the side or do you just stick to what works now? No, I, I'm constantly back testing in the sense that I back test my same strategy because I feel that during the weekend I have time. So I use the soft Forex um, simulator to just exercise trading because that is also important. Exercise. And the best way to exercise is, is using a simulator. And I, I highly recommend that. So you can sharpen your, your, your skills in trading. You can then see 
and and I also look back at my trades and see how could I have done it better, where could I have entered it better? Should I have waited to candle to break the previous candle high? All of those things. So I go back to my 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 journal and see. Well, what can I have done better to, to make it a better trade? And that helps a lot. Yeah, after all, it's, it's always about sharpening your skills. So you have like, you have like the gym, then you have the competition. In the weekend's yeah. competition, during the weekend, it's the gym. You have to practice and make sure your skills mm -hmm. stay top notch all the time. So yeah. that's really good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any advice you'd like to pass on to people? Anything you want to mention that we didn't touch on yet? I think even if you, if you trade your own account, I think you have to look at it as a business. Um, you have expenses, simulators are, are, are costly. You have trading view. I advocate also the trading view, the paid version, which doesn't have, have the ads, which, yes. which helps. And um, it's a business and you have to have that always in, in your mind and be disciplined in everything you do. So, and don't, don't trade for trade, have a vision, have a goal. What is your goal for the month, for the week, for the day? And keep to your rules. If you have rules, keep to them. Don't deviate from them of that, that's bad. You have to be disciplined, keep to your trading plan, use simulators. It costs a little bit, but it's worth it. And especially if you want to grow and, and get to a point where we will manage people's money, you have to do that investment for sure. That's awesome. That's really good advice. What did you do before trading? Were you having a full-time job or what was your main yes. occupation? Yes, I'm, I'm still a consultant. So, <laughs> but nowadays my consulting part is part-time. <laughs> so uh, at, in the beginning, trading was part-time and my consultant job was full-time. And now it's, it's, uh, it's the other way around. That's awesome. I think I'm really part of the progress you've done so far. I think you've done a lot and you've not been a member for that long. So this is awesome also because you've been able to achieve a lot of results in a short period. So I really appreciate that. I think you're doing a good job and I wish you the best of luck, of course, with all of that. Where can people find you if they'll connect with you or reach out? Do you have a website with your fund? Can people access this online? I, I think the best way is just to send me an email um, and okay. um, I, I can give them advice on how to begin and and what to look for and all of those things. But I highly recommend everyone to just buy your course. It has changed the way I trade. It has helped me in, in various ways from the test I did with the DISC, which gave me an insight of what type of person I am and what type of trading I have to look into for the psychological part, which is very, very important, especially when you're trading other people's money. So I highly recommend uh, your course too, which is very, very, very good in my opinion. I appreciate that. I think, thank you very much for that. This is awesome. So awesome. Thank you, Gerald. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll talk soon. If you want to become a part of our academy like Gerald, I'll leave a link below. The first link in the description of the video is going to be to join the academy. And first of all, to apply because we do a call with everyone first, see if they are a good fit for the academy. And if you are, then you can become part of a big community of traders who are serious about getting some results and progressing and supporting each other. Check out that link below and I'll catch you back here for the next video pretty soon. Ciao.